Shanti, you have a quick view on this, uh, either from the viewpoint of a mandate or tax benefits or something? At least incentives may be, sorry. Yeah, I think at least maybe incentives, perhaps, but I do agree with the... No, you'll have to use it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I just agree that uh, okay. maybe incentives, that's all, perhaps. Okay, so let me uh, just open up for uh, maybe two questions. Uh, yes, sir, go ahead. Could we have the mic there? Could you tell us who you are? Uh, sorry, do we have a mic here, please? Okay, just go ahead. I'll report. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mic? One mic here. So you could keep this, and that mic is already there, so that's okay. Um, My name is Vijay Raghun, and I... Uh, work with the IT sector, but I also look after the National Institute of Speech and Hearing at Trivandrum. Uh, the biggest challenge that is there is actually not the number of people who uh, who want to employ people with disabilities, but it is to show successes. Okay, like the Infosys success which we talked about, I think is good. I think from what Shanti talked about, there are a lot of issues that are there, but you should realize that the children coming in or um, who who actually become adults have ambitions like everyone else. So they don't want to go in as an assistant or a helper. They see their brother or their sister or their neighbor who is actually getting to a very senior position. That's where I like what uh, Sandeep's uh, approach on, uh, on looking at where you can take them ahead. And I think we need to look at some of that and then look at what changes need to be done on the education side for that. And I'll just give you an example. Uh, I mean, they, we have a mandate for this thing on buildings, okay, where it's there. It is in the law. No buildings can be cleared without uh, without um, uh, without access being available. At the same time, the three percent reservation which government has has put in is a big block. Uh, and the implementation on that, because um, in Kerala, which is supposed to be uh, forward thinking and all this, they initially said it's only for class four jobs. Okay. And then one had to go to court to get that done. They had the same thing for engineering admissions. The 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 act is very clear. Again, we had to go to court, and today, 3% of the seats are reserved for people with disabilities. So I, I would say it is more, mandate is not what I think is going to help. Incentives may, but you have to be very careful that incentives are not misused. Because what would happen is they would say, good, we'll, we'll employ you, you sit at home, we will pay you. That's the worst thing that you can do to a person with a disability. So I think it's, it's things like this which we should look at. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think we need to do some, maybe NASCOM can look at uh, promoting I mean, or, or publicizing uh, these success stories. And I think media has a major role to play there. Okay, lady next to you, go ahead. Um, I'm Sudha Subramaniam. I come from an institution called Pathway. We've worked three decades with disability. Uh, I would just like to um, uh, make a small request. See, all areas of disability have been covered, but people with mental disability have been left out. Now, I would just like to represent to say that people with uh, mental disability is not a homogeneous group whom you believe they are not employable. People in the mild category and moderate category are all employable. And I would like to make this statement here because I've worked for three decades with this area. Uh, I'll just add, I agree with her. Uh, we are in fact working with a couple of companies on, uh, like for example, Shell on where they could work. We've already placed people as factory workers, etc. But it's a place where, as you very rightly mentioned, people don't realize that persons with uh, mental retardation can work. My request is here uh, with even with you, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Shanti Raghun, that even in your presentation, sure. I found it missing. Correct. And we as torchbearers cannot let this happen. I would like to place on record that oh, we have you know, more than 50 years of independence and more has passed by. Unfortunately, not one single mentally people with mental challenge have been placed for employment. It is people like us who are giving sheltered employment. I am willing to give enough information on where they can be employable, what can be done. I am willing to work with any corporate who wants to have information on this. We are willing to share whatever we have. Thank you very much. Good point, ma'am. I think, in fact, uh, even in the statistics, the mental uh, uh, disabilities are not really captured. That 70 million is really physical disabilities. And uh, there's a long way to go before it even comes up to the event horizon. Okay, maybe last question. We do have to wrap up now. Uh, did we had a couple of hands up here. Okay. Um, if not, uh, I, would, I do need to bring this to a close. Uh, I was going to ask for closing comments for each of the panelists, but I'm afraid we don't have the time. Uh, there is clearly a very long way to go and we've found uh, that, I mean, the, the first few steps uh, that 
we've taken, that the association, uh, the NASCOM Foundation has taken, uh, the industry has taken are uh, very, very few. There are really very few companies which have gone beyond the early stage of a CSR initiative. But uh, I, I think what's heartening is in the last uh, maybe year or so and maybe a little more in 2007, uh, this is coming quite a bit to the fore so that uh, people are at least discussing this, discussing uh, issues on, on you know, platforms like this. And uh, as someone pointed out, highlighting the success stories. And the highlighting the success stories is not just a public highlighting, but even within the company, you know, to uh, buy in the other departments. So if you have even one success story to highlight and showcase it and show that the person performs, is productive, you don't have ongoing costs. As Paul said, it's, you know, maybe 10% for the first three or four months and then, you know, you're, you're home free. Uh, so to highlight these stories uh, is, is going to have a, a positive effect. And I really hope this industry, this includes the IT and the BPO services industry, can take a lead here because it's ideally cut out to be able to uh, do this. So I'd like to thank all of you very much and thank the panel for this very abbreviated and rapid fire uh, session. And uh, I hope we can take this forward next year and in between. Thank you very much. Back to NASCOM.